Chris Elliott-Smith, a neuroscientist from the University of Waterloo, has recently built what is the most advanced artificial brain ever. Um, Elliott Smith was actually a neuroscientist who was working on a book that was proposing a synthetic model for the human brain, a sort of artificial computer that would mimic what the brain does. And he thought to himself, well, why write a book about this? Because everyone's just going to say it's nonsense. It probably wouldn't work. So he actually built the thing, which was really cool. So over the course of a year, he built this um, computerized brain, basically. Uh, named it Spawn, that's S-P-A-U-N, and it does all sorts of things, and it mimics various parts of the brain surprisingly well, and it's actually a collection of 2.5 million simulated neurons. That's a far cry from the usual 100 million or 100 billion neurons in the human brain, but still a pretty impressive accomplishment, and here's a short video of him explaining it. My colleagues and I at the University of Waterloo have built a large-scale model of a functioning brain. We call this model SPAWN, which is short for Semantic Pointer Architecture Unified Network, in reference to the methods we have developed for building this type of model. SPAWN is organized into subnetworks that mimic the structure and function of several neuroanatomical areas responsible for perception, action, and cognitive control. The model receives its only input as a 28 by 28 pixel image, shown on the right, and generates its output by controlling a simulated arm. In this video clip, you can see the high-level neural activity of Spawn while it performs several tasks, including recognition, list memorization, and syntactic pattern completion. Spawn is simulated at the level of individual neurons that communicate with a combination of electrical action potentials, or spikes, and chemicals called neurotransmitters. Here, red indicates a high spiking activity, and blue indicates low activity. As the model has 2.5 million neurons, only a small proportion of overall activity is shown. The subnetworks we are showing are approximately mapped to their corresponding anatomical areas. For example, infratemporal cortex, the highest level of the visual hierarchy, is near the back of the brain, while motor areas are in the vertical stripe in the middle. Executive control areas are at the front, with working memory areas just behind them in prefrontal cortex. The simulation is likely too fast and unfamiliar to demonstrate the subtleties of the model. However, we have shown that Spawn replicates and predicts behavioral and neural data across a wide variety of tasks and data collection methods. Now, as I mentioned, this artificial brain has some limitations. It can only do about uh, seven or eight things. But what's really cool is that the way it does them is very human-like. We could program a machine to do the stuff that it's doing pretty easily and very efficiently. For instance, memorizing or keeping in mind several things on a list. In the example used, it was thinking of six numbers at the same time, all being used uh, in working memory, which is basically uh, the term used to describe what we're thinking of in this moment. And much like humans, it makes the same mistakes in that it'll have a bias towards remembering the first thing on the list and the last thing on the list. And the stuff in the middle gets a bit fuzzy. And, of course, we could have a computer program that uses way less information that's much simpler to do the same thing. But the fact that it's operating much like a human brain does is really exciting and shows that we might someday be able to make a working model of the human brain. This is not the same as artificial intelligence. We actually don't have a good theory of human intelligence right now, but it's a huge step forward in that direction and could give us an understanding of how certain neurological disorders form in the brain and methods we can use to help fix them. Uh, the regions of the brain that were artificially created are the prefrontal cortex, the basal ganglia, and the thalamus, and a few other ones, but uh, for anyone who knows a little bit about neuroscience, that shows it's not just a brain calculating things. It's actually connected to an eye and a robotic arm. So there's input coming in and output coming out. So it's actually engaging with the world, not simply receiving data and outputting. Well, it is doing that, but not in the way a computer would. It's doing it in the way that we do. So overall, it's a really cool discovery, or I shouldn't say discovery, it's a really cool invention. And there's actually a model that you can download and use your computer at home. The only problem is it requires about 24 gigs of RAM.
which is a lot. My computer couldn't handle that, and most can't. That's why it's being done at a university. But nonetheless, it is out there, and uh, as computational technology advances, we might be able to create something even more complicated and even more closely resembling the human brain.